You know, it's an interesting thing how fate works, uh, ladies and gentlemen, in regards to when you're thinking about someone, when you reflect on someone's life, you're thinking about them, and you find out some hours later that that person has passed on. I say that because I was actually looking at some information about uh, Melvin Van Peebles, in particular, his relationship with Bill Cosby. And we found out, sadly, late last night that uh, Melvin Van Peebles, the uh, uh, director, composer, writer, he was a man of many things. He was an actor, but he was also a filmmaker, composer, but he was a revolutionary on top of that. Well, Mr. Van Peebles died at the age of 89 years old. Uh, he was surrounded, obviously, by his friends and family. My, Melvin, uh, he's the patriarch of the Van Peebles family, uh, father of Mario Van Peebles, who was the director of classic hits and movies such as Posse, uh, New Jack City. There was also uh, Badass as well, which he released in 2003 as a tribute to his father and a backstory on how his father father made sweet sweet back badass song <clears throat> now what's interesting about mr van peebles uh just a few things that people may not know <coughs> was that he started out uh after joining the air force he uh worked obviously a series of jobs including as a cable car grip man in san francisco and he was also uh, an author and writer. His, uh, he completed a series of short films to get into filmmaking uh, at the suggestion of a passenger. And his first short film was Pick Up Men for Herrick in 1957. Now, I'm gonna go through not everything in his career, but he did, was, uh, from that point on, Melvin Van Peebles be, uh, started to get into and venture into filmmaking. <coughs> and eventually, I'm sorry, y'all, I'm fine. I'm, I know I sound sexy, but I'm congested. You know, I came on here not doing too good, but I want to come on and do a tribute and talk about this revolutionary of a filmmaker that we had. You know, this was a man who put everything into his work and to make his film. Uh, his first Hollywood film was a 1970 film called Watermelon Man, which was written by Herman Raucher. And that starred a comedian by the name of Godfrey Cambridge, a black comedian at that time who, his character was put in whiteface. He was a racist. And eventually one day he started to evolve to become, I shouldn't say the term involved, but he wakes up one morning to find that he's black. So he lived, uh, and uh, that was a very, I'm sure, controversial film at that time, very challenging in how it forced America to look at race. But his most uh, picture that he's most familiar with was Sweet Sweet Back's Bad-Ass Song. Now, as you may know, I've been doing my research in, uh, for, you know, lately with regards to the Bill Cosby matter. And I've talked about, you know, the people that he has helped out in Hollywood. For instance, I think back of Clarence Williams III. Clarence Williams III is someone we lost back in June. Uh, another great and outstanding uh, actor that Bill Cosby actually gave a recommendation to Aaron Spelling so that he was able to get the Mod Squad. And what your Bill Cosby did when Melvin Van Peebles was in the process of trying to develop Sweet Sweet Back's Badass Song, which was which they call the uh, first film of the black exploitation era, which it technically, I guess some people don't like the term black exploitation because they make it sound like the black actors were exploited when they were paid on those sets to were given money, uh, which is true. But it did, I guess, usher in some other unfavorable aspects of the community as well. When you look at even movies like Superfly, Superfly, glorifying the drug dealer and the pimp. Uh, 
you know, of course they had stuff that was outright silly like Blackenstein or black killer things of that nature. But those were still films that a lot of people loved and people went to go see. And it was important back then because you didn't see too many black actors at that time uh, that got in mainstream studios and on camera. And Melvin Van Peebles, when he made Sweetback's Badass Song, he was not only the director of this film, he was the writer, producer, and he also worked on the editing and the music. And for a film produced on a budget of $150,000, which no studio wanted to finance, Van Peebles had to find, uh, had to find financiers to help get his project off the ground. And none other than Bill Cosby gave a $50,000 loan to Melvin Van Peebles to complete the project. And the film was, uh, the film, which is, uh, which was uh, fast paced and Van Peebles had to independently shoot over 19 days performing his own stunts and even some sex scenes, which were reportedly unsimulated, meaning they were real, uh, shot. It grossed over $15 million when it was released. And it was actually selected last year into the National Film Registry by the Library of Congress as being culturally, historically, or aesthetically significant. So Sweetback's uh, Badass Song, uh, which was praised when it came out, was uh, praised, of course, in the community by blacks, black Americans who flocked to support it. It was uh, celebrated by the Black Panther Party. It was actually required viewing, viewing for members of the Black Panther Party. And it demonstrated, according to Variety, that Hollywood films could, that portrayed militant blacks could be highly profitable. And that led to the creation of the black exploitation genre. But Roger Eber, he even stated that uh, the film didn't, wasn't an example of an exploitation film. But nevertheless, this is what supposedly sparks this. And, uh, you know, the cat, he was called Sweet Sweet Back because of his way with the ladies and how he did it and what his member was, the size of his penis. <laughs> and what's interesting, too, is Mario Van Peebles, uh, Melvin Van Peebles used uh, his young son, his eldest son, Mario, as young Sweetback and as a uh, kid in the scene. His daughter, is uh, Megan, who passed away in 2006, also was in that film. But Melvin Van Peebles' movie, uh, that is what he's mostly associated with. He came about, especially in an era where a lot of uh, new black directors were starting to get opportunities to direct mainstream roles. So from when Melvin Van Peebles did uh 1971 you know sweet sweetbacks badass song then you saw gordon park senior do uh shaft i believe shaft came out later that same year or 1972 i could be mistaken and you also had ozzy davis who started to do movies like hell up and Har cotton comes to harlem i believe was a movie he directed uh and a few others and ozzy davis actually was in the badass movie of which Mario Van Peebles uh, directed as a tribute to his father. So that is also something that I uh, admire and remember Mr. Van Peebles for is that he created essentially uh, an avenue for not for only black directors, but even for future generations in his family, because obviously his son who's a filmmaker, a talented filmmaker in his own right, has a venue that he was able to go through. So he becomes a director following his father's footsteps. Mario Van Peebles' son is an actor as well. So eventually he may be a film director as well. So, uh, you know, but his son is Mandela Van Peebles, uh, who was in the last Saw movie. So uh, Mr. Van Peebles was divorced from his wife, Maria. His first, I believe that was his only wife. And... You know, he had three children, 
Mario Van Peebles, Megan Van Peebles, and Max Van Peebles. Uh, Mr. Van Peebles was still active, interestingly, even up until his 80s, and he was actually a painter as well. And he also did three and a half years in the Air Force uh, in 1954 when he enlisted. And so that's where he met his first wife, Maria, who actually was a German actress as well. So uh, Mr. Van Peebles uh, lived a great life. Um, I am certainly saddened by his passing. I certainly, uh, you know, wish his family nothing but the best. But he, in living a long life that he did, he left the mark for future generations that will follow. And we can always go back and look at the work that he did. Uh, you know, my main thing, too, is he even cameoed in a lot of his son's projects, which I thought was interesting and fun. Um, he was in Posse. Uh, he was in, I believe he had a scene in New Jack City. Reggie Van Hutland had him in Boomerang, which I thought was uh, pretty interesting, where he was in the editing room, editing Strong Jay's commercial. So uh, Mr. Van Peebles lived a very... A great life, a joyous life, a a full life. You know, it's the young people that we need to mourn for who don't get to experience life, who don't get to grow old, who don't get to have children and grandchildren and live through things and get to see the world. This man saw the world and he gave so much to it. So with that said, uh, this wasn't going to be a long video uh, Melvin Van Peebles, rest in peace. And there's a reason why, you know, black filmmakers, you know, they're not where they are today. Uh, you know, of course, we've they've actually superseded some expectations, you know, having black directors who are making, you know, films that are multi, you know, billion dollar budget films like the Black Panther, for instance. Although, yes, we know Disney owns the rights to Black Panther. But I don't think you could have a Ryan Cooliger, Cooliger or a Spike Lee or a even a Tyler Perry, and I'm critical of Tyler Perry's work, of course, but the Hutland brothers, the uh, the Hutland brothers, and of course, the Mario Van Peebles, the uh, Spike Lees, the Malcolm D. Lees, without a Melvin Van Peebles or Gordon Parks or Ozzie Davis. And Mr. Van Peebles has certainly set a trend. So shout out to this brother. May he rest in peace. And let's celebrate the life. Look at his work. Go watch Sweetback's Badass Song. You know, I've never, and I'm sharing this, and I might lose my card, but I've never seen the movie Sweetback's Badass Song. I've just never had any interest in it. Interest in it. Uh, never seen it, but you know what? I think if I can get a chance to, I will take a look at it uh, in honor of his memory. And I also want to point out something while I'm here, too. Um, I talked about how this brother was an author. He was also a composer because he composed the music to the show, to the uh, to the movie, for his movie. He composed that with a up-and-coming Chicago group called Earth, Wind, and Fire back in the uh, 1970s. And Melvin uh, worked on that film. You know, Mr. Van Peebles, I should say, he worked on that film night and day. Uh, Mario Van Peebles, if you go check out uh, the movie Badass, it's basic. it's a film, but it's a documentary. And it didn't do great at the box office, but it was still a great film on how he got that film made financed using, of course, his connections, his friendship with Bill Cosby. And on that note, I want to just also say, too, Mr. Van Peebles stayed on code with regards to Bill Cosby. When people had asked him, and you can go look it up, Mr. Van Peebles refused to even talk about it because he said he had nothing but positive, positive time with Bill Cosby. He didn't go on national TV and talk about the fact, well, I think he's a hypocrite or I don't know all the facts of it, you know, I don't know all the facts of the case. His thing was he didn't know all the facts of the case. He knew the man, obviously, from being friends with him. But 
he refrained from commenting because he knew that no woman should be treated in that way, but he didn't have enough of the facts, and this was his friend. So, uh, again, um, Mr. Van Peebles, OG, OG, Melvin Van Peebles, uh, passing away at the age of 89 from 1932 to 2021, your sunrise and sunset. But, sir, your story, your life is still remembered among others, and we wish you and your family nothing but the best. Rest in power, King. You deserve it. With that being said, this has been another edition of Gavin Richard Presents here on channel GBOO2786. I'll holla. Peace.